Hello and welcome back. So, like I was saying in the previous video, it would be nice if we can have uh, a situation where instead of having to put data here, we can simply have these guys as the variables. Because we already know that these variables are inside this data uh, variable here, these, uh, these items in here, sorry. So if I go back to the uh, category class here, oh, wait a minute, where is this? If I go back to, let me come back to the controller here, the admin controller. Okay, so this is where we are assigning the data variable here. So it would be nice to have these guys inside here as variables. So that is actually easy to create. So what I will do is because this feature will be required by all controllers. So we are better off putting it in the main controller. So I'll go to the core and click on controller. <coughs> Excuse me. And then right here, this is where we are supplying the data. Because remember that every view is happening inside this function right here. So this function, so everything we are viewing is being loaded. All pages are being loaded from this function. So whatever, this is why every page that is loaded has access to this data uh, variable there. So now what we could do instead, there's a variable, there's a function, sorry, called extract. It's like this. And so let's imagine for a second. So let me explain how this one works a little bit. So let's imagine for a second I have an array like this. I have um, uh, something like name, and then I've assigned this to a value, maybe a name like that. And then maybe I have age and I have some other content here. So what I would do is instead of me, because to access these things, I would have to call this the way it is like this. But if I use extract and then I use the same uh, variable here, this is an array here. So if I do this, I say extract. So after this point right here, when I come down here, I can now access these values as they are right here. So I can do something like this at this point. I can say echo uh, variable name like so. And this is going to be valid because what extract does is it converts this array and gets the keys and creates variables with those key names and then assigns whatever values are there. So I can do this after this point. I don't need to use that to access. So I hope you understand what that means. So what we can do here to have that kind of feature is simple. We can just say extract data from there, I'll just put it there, like so. So from this point onward, whatever was contained inside data will become a variable of its own. So now to prove that, let me come back here. Um, where is this? Uh, Ajax, category class. Mm, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Um, let's, let's try the admin header for a second here. Let me click on header. So as you can see here in the header, we have data and then we have page title like that. So this is fine. It's still going to work. If I do refresh my page, you see that uh, I don't get any errors here whatsoever. The title at the top there still exists. So what I will do is I will remove this data part like so and that like that. So now it becomes a variable on its own. So if I now refresh, you see that I still don't get any errors because we did extract this. However, if I go back to the controller and let me comment this out, you will notice that I will get an error this time and you won't see the error here, but because it's in the title there. So as you can see, there's a title there. There's notice undefined variable in there instead of showing the title. Okay, so we leave that there. And let me come back to, okay, so I've changed that in the header. So we'll be changing these variables as we go. Whatever, wherever we used the data variable, we can now change it to something else. Okay, so well and good. Now, 
one more thing to do here there are zeros i want this to say enabled or disabled when there's a zero or a one so that is simple to do we just go back to the class because this is where we are creating that table this is a make table so at this point it's cat row disabled this is the value that contains either a zero or a one so what I will do instead is to set it to something else. So I will come up here before this point and just say disabled is equal to. So let's use the uh, one line if statement. So I'm going to say if that, which means uh, if it is true, right, then we're going to set it to um what would be the word here it's because the the column is disabled so when disabled is equal to one then it's disabled so here we are asking if it's equal to one which is true so then it means it's disabled okay and then full colon there and then uh, disabled and the opposite is obviously enabled like that so uh, the question here the this is the condition and then the question mark and if the condition is true <clears throat> this will be assigned that value and if not it will be assigned that value so let's see if this actually works so let me right click uh, refresh and there we go we have enabled there which is pretty good and then we don't need these um, what are these these tick marks here we just need these two because we just want to be able to edit and delete right so let's remove these tick marks here let me come back here which is this one right there i think that's the check mark and i will remove that check mark there let's see that and there we go so we can edit and we can delete then here when on enabled and disabled, I think we should be able to click also and change from enabled to disabled just there. Here we should be able to edit the content. So, so far so good. Now, keep in mind that once we are done with this category section, this, will, this is going to be the template for everything else. So for example, for products, the products are uh, page here we'll be able to create that in no time because we're just going to copy what's here and then put it in the context of products so once we are done here we are good to go so now for a moment let's uh, try and since we have the add let's try and create a delete version of this so let's see here okay that works fine so what i want is for me when i click on this thing i get a question mark do you want to delete and then i can uh, press yes or no so let's use some javascript to achieve that so here we know where this is originating from so we're just going to give it an on click listener and this is in the category class so i will come here and create an on click listener so I'll create one for both on I don't know why I write it like that. On click is equal to. So when this is clicked, we're going to uh, create functions. So one of them will be delete, uh, delete row. I think let's generalize it like that. And I'll say event like so, because we want to get that event. And this one is not delete. This one is actually edit. So we'll have two functions, edit row and delete row. Okay, so now the, the important thing here is we need to be able to know what row this is right here. What row number is this? Because once we know the row number, then we are good to go. So here, uh, the ID comes with this. So we can simply add the ID somewhere here. Now, instead of us, there are two ways we can do this. I can have a um, an attribute here. I can just say ID is equal to, and then I can put one of these here. Uh, let me get disabled. Instead of that, we have an ID there. So I'm just going to say cat row ID there. 
like so so that we can get the ID. Once we got the ID, we can know which row to delete in our database, right? But because we are using single quotes outside, this will not be evaluated. So we have to step out of the, the, the string and then go back in there again, like so. Okay, so if now I come back and refresh and I right click and say inspect element, uh, let's inspect the element here. So this is one table row with table data here. Wait a second. What I want are the buttons themselves. So let me right click on this one and inspect that particular one. And you're going to see that here it says button ID is equal to nine in my case, that's number nine. And so what we can do with this information is that once we create our function, we can just tell it to get this attribute called ID and then we'll have our ID. Now, a different way to do this, though uh, this is a bit more advanced, would be to just supply the ID right there directly into the onClick uh, event. Because if you notice here, we are sending the event to the function, but you can actually send much more than just the event. So for example, in the same way we can, uh, since the, we can only add one item here, not, not really actually, we can add several items. I can just put uh, a comma here. I will put the event here and then I'll put a comma. Then I can put the ID there so that I don't need to read back uh, to see it. So. I can easily do this, exactly what I've done here, copy that, and then I can put that there with a comma. Because remember, this is a function we are calling. Now, I'm not very sure if uh, maybe two things, oh no, we're actually calling a function, so we can do this. A, sec a third way to do it is to add an object like this. And you say, you even, uh, you can give it, uh, uh, this will be like uh, one of those, um, what do you call it in uh, PHP? A, an array which has a word as a key. So let's do something like, I can say event and do that. So event, and then I'll add the event itself. This is the key, this is the value. And then here I can do the same thing and say ID, full colon like that and then I will close with that so because I've used uh, this is JSON now because I've used these I've created an object and that object has an event and it's got an ID of this one so if I were to test this let's try this uh, so that we can see how it would work so on click edit row so let's create this function down here Oh, sorry, I forgot this is uh, not the location to create uh, the function. So we have to go to the admin, view admin, and then we go to categories. There we go. So right about, uh, where are we? This is where we're echoing our table row. Now, remember that we extracted this in the controller, so we don't need to do this we can simply delete this part and it will still work like that because this is now a variable okay 